Verily, this is a part and parcel of being a human being. To be tested and tried so that we can either be raised up in ranks or we seek Allah's refuge lowered into the depths. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once went onto one of the houses of Medina and he asked the companions from the rooftop, he said, do you see what I see? They said, what do you see, Ya Rasulullah? He said, I see fitan, in the plural once again. I see trials and tribulations falling upon your houses like rain. Like rain. Meaning that the fitan will be so severe, so numerous in quantity, no one, nothing will be protected from it. Nothing will be protected from fitan. Even if you're inside your houses, it will still fall upon you. In another hadith, the Prophet wasallam said that fitan will come one after the other. Three of them, he said, nothing will remain untouched by. There will be general international fitan basically. Not a single person except he will be affected by this fitan. Others, he said, they will be like the wind blowing in the summer, a strong wind. Others, he said, will be large and small. Minhunna sighar wa minhunna kibar. Some fitan will be small, others will be large. So severe will the test and trial be that the Prophet ﷺ said that towards the end of time the fitan will be so severe that a person will wake up a mu'min and he will go to sleep the same night as a kafir. And he will go to sleep a night as a, as a Muslim, a mu'min and he will wake up the next morning as a kafir. In other words, the fitan will affect him so much that he will not be able to remain firm to the claim that he is a believer. And he will do something, or say something, or believe something that will remove him from the fold of Islam. So severe are these fitan going to be. And the Prophet ﷺ also described for us in a very beautiful image the effects of these fitan. What happens when you accept a fitna, when you are tempted into it? When you fall into some type of trial or tribulation versus what happens when you reject it. In another hadith reported in Sahih Muslim, he said, Fitan will be continually presented to the heart just like a carpet is woven. In other words, string after string, strand after strand. Continually fitan will be presented to you just like a carpet is woven one after the other. So whatever heart accepts that fitna, that heart will be touched with a black spot. And whatever heart rejects that fitna, that heart will be touched with a white spot. Until towards the end, there will only be two types of hearts. This is what the Prophet ﷺ said. Fitna will continue to come, one after the other, until towards the end of all of the fitna, towards the end of all of this, there will only be two categories of people. No third category to them. The first of them, the Prophet ﷺ said, His heart is as white as snow. His heart is as white as snow. How did he become white as snow? Because each and every fitna that happened, he remained firm to his religion. Whatever happened around him, he was not swayed. He was not dissuaded from obedience to Allah, from the worship of Allah, from believing in Allah. Therefore, one after the other, his heart continually was spotted by white spots. Until finally it was as white as snow. And the Prophet ﷺ said, this heart, it will remain firm, nothing will harm it, as long as the sun and the earth are present. In other words, because this person has conditioned himself to reject fitan, no matter what happens, he will remain firm in his place. Nothing will cause him to be swerved from the religion of Allah. And the other heart, the Prophet ﷺ said, will be dark and murky. Dark and murky, not just a plain dark, but an evil darkness, murky darkness, colored darkness. The Prophet ﷺ said, like a, a container of water that has been tilted to a side. There's a beautiful analogy here. A container of water that has a spout coming out from it, Okay, the Prophet ﷺ said, imagine this being tilted. What water will this hold? No matter what you pour into it, the water will continue to fall out. So the Prophet ﷺ compared the heart of that person like this container. No matter what you try to do, it will not stay in his heart, it will continually flow out of it. 
No matter how you try to make it firm and fixed in the religion, nothing will change and affect this. This heart, according to the Prophet ﷺ, لا يعرف معروفا ولا ينكر منكرا. It has no concept of good and evil. It has reached the depths of depravity. It has no concept of that which is good, nor any concept of that which is evil. إلا ما أشيب هوا except what his desires wants to do. He has no fear of Allah, no belief in Allah. He does whatever he wants. He lives a carefree life. He does not have taqwa and iman to prevent him from doing anything. These are the two parables that the Prophet ﷺ gave. What happens one fitna after another? Now what are these fitna that the Prophet ﷺ is referring to? What are they? Well, if you want to be general, each and every incident that occurs to us as an individual, or to us collectively as an ummah, it can be classified as a fitna. Let me repeat that, and there are no exceptions to this. Each and every incident that occurs to us as an individual, or occurs to us collectively as a Muslim ummah, it can be qualified as a fitna. Why? Because Allah is testing us, is trying us, is seeing our reaction to that incident. Allah says in the Quran, وَنَبَلُوكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ fitna." We will test you with good and with evil as a fitna. If you get a job, that is a fitna. If you get fired, that is a fitna. If you're blessed with a child, that is a fitna. If you lose a loved one, that too is a fitna. A blessing and a catastrophe, both are fitness. If a blessing happens to you, Allah Azza wa Jal will see, what is your reaction to that blessing? Are you going to use that blessing to come closer to Allah? Or are, you going to, or, or are you going to use it to be yet another barrier between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You get more money. Does that make you a better Muslim? Make you increase your thankfulness to Allah for giving you all that He has? Make you give more for the sake of Allah? Or does that make you more arrogant, more conceited, more wanting to spend for, the, for this dunya and not about the akhirah? Similarly, when you lose a job, when you lose money, does that make you more patient? Come closer to Allah. Raise your hands up to Allah and say, Oh Allah, help me in this time of difficulty. Or does that make you want to get money through any way possible? Halal or haram? What is your, your reaction going to be to each and every incident that occurs to you? As an ummah as well as a collective ummah, what we do, is a, what we do as a response to a fitna is the test that Allah Azza wa is seeing from us. So, each and every incident that occurs to us in our lives is a fitna. However, there are certain fitna which are more, if you like, of a test than others. Not all fitna are at the same level. As the Prophet ﷺ said, مِنْ هُنَّ صِغَارُ وَمِنْ هُنَّ كِبَارُ Of them are very large and of them are very small. Some of the fitna that the Prophet ﷺ especially emphasized, especially warned us about, are the following. First and foremost, this world with, with, with all that it has to offer you. The dunya basically. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Innama amwalukum, or Allah Azza wa Jalla said, Innama amwalukum wa awladukum fitna. Your money and your children are a fitna to you. Allah Azza wa Jalla is testing you to see how you react to that. Likewise, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Every single ummah has a special fitna. Special thing that will test and try it. And the fitna of my nation is money. وَفِتْنَةُ to ummati al mal. This is the main fitna that will afflict the Muslim ummah. Many of the nations before us did not reach the level of luxury that the Muslims have reached. And that is why the Prophet ﷺ, once when a large amount of gold and silver had come to him from different countries and he was distributing it amongst the Sahaba, and he saw some of the Sahaba eagerly taking some of this money, he smiled. And he said, take, because this was halal money to take. Take! Because I swear by Allah, I am not worried that you will be poor. 